Are you searching for a summer study abroad opportunity in the US? In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing three different programs that are gonna be great for international students who want to come to America and realize their overseas dreams for a summer semester. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Kimber, I'm a study abroad specialist. I help high school, college, and graduate students around the world realize their study abroad dreams. And if you're returning back, welcome back. I'm so excited to have you here to share this information. So as we start thinking about summertime in particular, I know that summer study abroad is one of the most popular things to talk about. Most of the videos that focus on summer on my channel are very popular because summer study abroad programs are unique in the sense that you get to really pack a lot in within a short amount of time. So compared to semester long programs where you're really there for the long haul, or even if you're doing a degree program, which of course could be one, two, three years. With summer study abroad, it's sort of you're in and you're out, but you get a lot done. And so there's a lot of opportunity to learn a lot, to make a lot of great connections, to really make an impression and to really learn about a particular country, city, wherever you're gonna be going, but without spending a lot of time and also being able to save a lot of money because summer study abroad programs tend to be a lot cheaper. And so what I want to do with this video is for international students who want to come to America, I want to give you some ideas of three different programs that might be great for you. I'm going to link all of them below so that you can at least look at them and explore more. But so for the first program to share with you, I am talking about the DePaul University Summer Language and Culture Program. So DePaul University is a private four-year institution here in the U.S. and it is a Catholic-based institution, but you do not have to be Catholic to go there, so don't get scared if you're not of the Catholic faith. But with this particular program, it's really special because it really is focused on helping students, international students specifically, work on improving their language skills with English. And so I know that for a lot of students who come to the U.S. or who are planning to come to the U.S., this is often a struggle because you're trying to figure out if you want to live in the U.S. long term. Maybe you have a degree program that you want to do in the future. You're like, my English is not where it needs to be. What do I need to do? And so this is going to be a wonderful program to consider if you want to do that. Now, one of the things to point out as well is that you do get the benefit of being in a large city. So Chicago is one of our largest cities in this country. And I know it gets a bad rap, but it's one of my favorite cities as long as you sort of stay in the safe parts, if you will. And you get a really um, sense of being able to be around a lot of different people. That's one of the benefits if you are coming to the US and you are planning to study in a place that is very populous because you're gonna find a lot of different people, lots of people from different places. And so it's gonna be great for you to be able to not just learn the language in the classroom, but also be able to practice it as you are out and about. So definitely consider that. So just to tell you a little bit about the program. So with this program, as I mentioned before, it does focus on helping students improve their English speaking specifically. And one of the things to know about that is with this program, it's not a starter program. So you don't have to be super advanced where you have been learning English for years, but you need to have at least an intermediate understanding of English. Number one, because it is a shorter program. And number two, because it's not sort of a basic program, there are plenty of basic programs that you can find either in your home country or there are some in the US as well. But this one is for intermediate people who are looking to sort of be able to find a way to make their English speaking more real. So just like what I talked about before, where you are now coming to the US and you are gonna get a chance to not only learn English, at a higher level, but also be able to integrate it and use it in your everyday life. So it's for intermediate speakers. So just wanna keep that in mind for you. In terms of the way that they are focusing on things, they really help you to learn how to communicate. So when we talk about communication in the scope of learning English, it's not just about being able to know phrases and know colloquialisms, things like that, sort of the basic slang. It really is about thinking, for example, how do you do a presentation in English? And in America, we have our own way of doing presentations versus in the UK. So if you're in a classroom setting or a work setting, how would you do a presentation? How would you do greetings to different people at different levels? How would you go about writing a standard email? How does that actually work? Even working on things like your resume. So it's really helping to teach you those types of basic skills that you will likely need if you want to continue on in the US. So really important to think about that as well. One of the other things to also consider 
is that the minimum age for the DePaul University program is 16. So that's actually a really good thing. I know that a lot of international students tend to start a lot earlier. Um, so for example, earlier in my career, I worked at a English language school in the UK, but we had students coming from all over the world. And some of the students were really young. They'd be like nine and 10 coming from all these different places. Like I'm here to learn English. And so I know that a lot of students, you really get started a lot earlier in terms of your immersion. And so it's a great thing that you just have to be at least 16 years of age to be able to start this program and come for the summer in the US with DePaul. So as long as you've reached that particular age by the start date of the program, you're gonna be all set with that. For the opportunity to be able to actually live in the city, I can talk more about living in Chicago and just kind of what it is going to cost you to live there. So you wanna keep in mind that with the program fees, the program fees are 1,100 US dollars. Now. With this particular program fee, I always like to tell people this is not just for summer study abroad. It's not just for international students coming to the U.S. That when you're thinking about your actual cost for study abroad, and I'm going to link a freebie below for you, which is my budget planning uh, e-guide, which is going to be really useful for you as you sort of go through it and try and plan your budgeting for wherever you want to go in the world. But when you're thinking about the actual cost of a program, I always like to remind students that when you're looking at the sticker price, so this 1,100 US dollars for DePaul, that is the sticker price for the tuition, but you also wanna think about your living costs. A lot of times students do not factor that in. So when they're looking at the sticker price, they're like, oh my gosh, like that's so affordable, that's so cheap, but you actually have to live. And I would just say that in a post 2020 world and in a now 2023, 2024, Probably through the next decade, you want to think about uh, factoring in inflation. You want to think about the up and down of the market. This is something that impacts everyone. And particularly if you are coming to a place like the United States, where, again, we have different levels of government. And so that means that there's lots of different people making lots of decisions and one place may be doing better than a different place. And it's very volatile in a lot of ways. And so you want to just make sure that you are keeping that in mind from a budget perspective that the 1,100 US dollars is the sticker price for the program, but you have to also factor in your living costs and other things you might need. Now to consider what is included in that particular program fee for the summer program at DePaul, it does include your tuition. So your tuition is included, your transportation is included, which is great. So that means getting around Chicago, getting to the actual program, that is included, and then also excursions. Now, with excursions, I have talked about this in other videos where there is essentially usually a hidden experience fee for excursions. With that, it is just included in here and it's quite affordable, but you just wanna keep that in mind that what they're gonna do is they change it every year, but they could do something really fun where they take you on an opportunity to do a Chicago Cubs game, which is uh, the baseball team, or they could you know, take you on different trips around the different regions. So they change it every year. So you can look on the website and see what they have going for the particular year that you're interested in applying. But with excursions, they are a great way, not only to be able to just be able to see sites, because again, you'll be in the classroom a lot and you'll be in your local neighborhood a lot, but you may not get to explore a lot. So it's a good way to be able to do that. And it's good to see that they do not have the hidden experience fee included and in that they've still been able to make it affordable for international students. The other thing as well is that your housing is also included. This is a big deal. So with housing, one of the great things about the United States and our college uh, system is that compared to other places like the UK, like many parts of Europe, so much of what we do is basically it's all very insular. So when you step on an average college campus or university campus, including DePaul, a lot of times you don't need to leave. I have had so many conversations with international students who have come to the US and they're like, this is really strange, particularly if let's say they've done an undergrad in let's say maybe Europe or the UK or parts of the Middle East where it literally is just a group of buildings and then everything else happens off campus. A lot of our <laughs> universities and even colleges here, if they're big enough, operate like small cities. So you will have pharmacies, barbershops, dry cleaners, gyms, fast food restaurants, 
nice restaurants, like all in the campus. And so people get really blown away by that. And so one of the great things about um, U.S. universities and colleges as well is that there's so much housing to go around. And especially in the summertime, you know, most students here in the U.S., they take advantage of taking their summers off. And even if they're off doing internships or whatever, they are not on campus. And so a lot of housing at universities here in the U.S. is purposed for international students, for study abroad students, for students doing internships from other places, for younger students as well. And so that is wonderful that they've been able to include that in the price. It's going to help to save you a lot. So that means that what you're really focusing on is just your basic living expenses of your food, your water, your ability to be able to exist and be able to obviously operate and have fun as well, go out and you know do different things. So that is wonderful that they've included that. So definitely click the link below in the description to learn more about the DePaul program. So the only thing that is not included in this particular <laughs> program within the fee, which I mean, we wanna just give a shout out to DePaul and say that the fact that they've been able to include your housing, the transportation, the tuition, and also excursions, within a 1,100 US dollar um, amount. I mean, I can raise my hand and I think I raised my hand for most Americans when we say that we would love to be able to go to a college and pay that much money and get that much. Um, and so it is quite amazing that they've been able to include that much amazing opportunity within the particular program. But the one thing that is not included within the cost is going to be your student visa. Now with student visas, I talk about student visas a lot on this channel. I have more to come on that. But with the student visa, you will be responsible for the cost of that. And so you'll just want to keep that in mind again. That is something that you'll want to think about in terms of factoring it in. And if you look at the budgeting e-guide, you're going to be able to find more information about how you factor that in. So just want to point that out that with this particular program, you are responsible for your own visa, but you get so much more included in that price that paying for a visa and going through that process should not be that difficult for you. And as far as I've been made aware in my research, they do actually provide support for you. So that means that they're going to provide you the letter that you need and the confirmation that you're going to need to be able to get your visa. So definitely don't really worry about it, but just know that you're going to have to uh, get your visa on your own for this particular program. So definitely click in the link below to learn more about the DePaul summer program, it sounds really exciting, especially if you are an intermediate speaker looking to take your English skills to the next level. And it's gonna be great to spend summer in Chicago. It's a wonderful place to be in the summertime, really sort of a nice mix of different cultures around that region of the Midwest. You're really gonna enjoy it. So definitely learn about that below. So for the second program that I am talking about for international students who want to come to the US during the summer, we are gonna be heading right next door from Illinois and jumping over to Indiana. So we are talking about the Purdue Summer Language and Culture Program. So yes, it is named the same thing. Ironically, the schools right there in that corridor of Indiana and Illinois, they have a lot of crossover. A lot of students will do cross studying. And so I wonder if there was a little bit of a copycat situation. But with Purdue University, it is a well-known university here in the US as well. Now it is a public university. Now I won't dive too deep into this, but I do just want to point out that when a lot of students hear what does public mean, what does private mean, I've done a video on that that I will link above, but it's a lot different than in other countries. So public universities here in the U.S. are funded by state government funds. So the particular state in this case is going to be Indiana. And so that means that, you know, they're not getting help from Texas. They're not getting help from Georgia. They're not getting help from New York. It is funded by essentially the taxpayers and land grants from the state of Indiana, whereas a private university um, like DePaul is going to be funded primarily by donors. And so that means people who have donated to the school. They also do get some uh, levels of government funding. People don't always like to talk about that. They do get some levels of government funding, but it's not in the same way. So just wanted to point that out. And also the fact that a lot of times public universities tend to be a little bit bigger and that's not really going to impact you for the summer, but I just wanted to point that out. So when I'm saying public and private, you're like, what does that actually mean? Because I know in other parts of the world, that does not really mean anything and you have different terms for that. So I wanted to point that out. So with the Purdue University one, it's a little bit different than the one that's over in DePaul right next door. So, so with this one, it's going to be great for all different levels. So I think that that's going to be the biggest difference between if you're comparing that program and this program, because it's going to be different for all different levels. So 
whether you are just starting out with your English and you're like, hey, I just want to jump right into it and come to America and learn English from the people who have been speaking it. Although I'm just going to put it out there that British English is real English and don't at me, you know I'm right. But anyway, I will just say that if you want to do that, you definitely can do that from the start. Or if you are interested in just enhancing what you've already done, maybe you're an advanced English speaker, it's going to be great for all levels. One of the things to know about this particular program is that it is a mix of reading, writing, and speaking. So with the other program that I was talking about, the first one, they really do focus on the writing, but they also help you with the communication part. But this one has it all blended together. So you're definitely going to be focused on the reading, the writing, and also the speaking. And so it's really going to help you to not, again, just be able to learn sort of the basics and sort of the colloquialisms, but also how you actually go about forming sentences and how the sentence structure should sound and how if you're doing a basic conversation with someone, how does that actually work? That's gonna be really useful for you, particularly for students who are just starting out because again, you are likely been doing what a lot of students do when they're trying to learn a language. So maybe you are watching different TV shows or, I mean, I love to hear stories particularly about how people learn English when they're like, yeah, you know, I was watching I don't know, some TV show that we all know here in America, like the Jeffersons, or I was watching Full House or something like that. We're like, oh, like, you know, it's, it's quite funny, like the way that a lot of people end up learning English. And I love that because it's something that is very relatable. And so you may be watching a lot of different programs that are US based, or maybe you are, you know, doing where you're listening to music that is English based or however you're doing it. But with this particular program, it's gonna be great for you to actually be able to dive in and say like, hey, like, I'm so excited to be able to actually learn how to implement this, and it's going to be a wonderful way to do it. Now, one of the other great things as well about this particular program, which I find really exciting and actually love this idea, is that they give you an American buddy. So what that essentially means is that they pair you up with a student. It's usually likely going to be maybe a graduate student or a student who is taking summer courses. Obviously, they're there as well. And this person is going to be a liaison for you. So it's a wonderful way to be able to not just, you know, make a friend, make a connection, but also have someone to help sort of mentor you and also as well so to sort of help you um, to be able to correct yourself as you're going along. So as you are learning the language, you can sit with this person, be able to learn how to have more uh, ease within your conversation and also as well be able to just learn more about obviously the university and what they're doing and what their pathway is. And so I love the fact that they build that in and that it's a way for you to feel comfortable. You are not just sort of walking on campus blindly. And so you're going to have that American buddy there to be able to practice English with. They will like you expose um, you to their friends. And so you'll have like a new circle of American friends that you can make um, to be able to practice your English. And so it's going to be a great way for you to be able to do that. So I love that they include that. Now, in terms of the actual pricing, what you're going to find is there's an option for you. So you have the option of either doing a a four-week program or a eight-week program. Now, a lot of students will say right now, which one do you recommend? For me, I would always say do it as long as possible. But I know that for a lot of students in the summertime, particularly if you are an international student, you could have maybe an internship going and then you're over here doing this program and that program. I know how you guys roll and I love you for it. I was the same way. I wish more Americans were like that. Um, but I will just say that if you can, if it is possible to do the eight week program, I feel that that's going to give you more of a well-rounded scope and it's going to give you a chance to not feel as rushed. If you're doing the four week program, again, it's quite intensive. It's quite immersive. So you're going to get a lot in there, but I think with the eight week option, it's going to be better because that way you sort of round it out your entire summer. And then whatever you decide to do next, you can really sort of take those skills back, especially if you're at the beginner level, if you're more advanced, Maybe four weeks is going to be perfect for you, but if you are just beginning, an eight-week slot just seems really more fitting to me, and it's what I would recommend to any students coming to me for advising, but if you feel like four weeks is all you can do or you have other things lined up, then try and work that within your schedule. Just to give you an idea of the pricing, so if you're doing the four weeks, it's going to be $3,500 US dollars, so again, still really affordable. I can tell you, like I said in the first program, most Americans would really you know, do something quite horrible to someone to get in a spot and to have 3,500 US dollars only to pay for a program. 
um, even if it's for four weeks, because even our part-time classes are a lot more expensive than that. And then for the eight-week program, it's going to be $6,500 US dollars. So it's still super economical. And again, similar to the program at DePaul, it includes the housing. So outstanding that they have decided to do that. I always like to tell students that if you get your housing taken care of, um, that's going to be the biggest part. The tuition, the housing are always like the, if you're thinking about, let's say it is a meal, like the hardiest parts are going to be the tuition and the housing. Everything else you can sort of work with. You can budget yourself and have a lower budget for food if you need to, or for transportation, you can figure it out. But without shelter and without actually getting into the program, you kind of don't have anything. And so I definitely am excited that they include housing within this. Now, what else to sort of think about with this particular Purdue program is that they give you a certificate of participation. So with a lot of students, they're like, well, what do I actually get? This is something that I also talk to students about is that you want to understand in terms of the credits that you're getting. Are you going to be getting credit from your home university? Are you going to be getting credit for that for doing this particular program? Or is it going to be where they're not giving you credit? You'll just want to understand that more clearly. And so with Purdue, they do not give you course credits in the sense of you're not going to get a, you know, sort of modified diploma or a certificate that says you went to Purdue in that way. You're going to get a certificate of participation, but it's still a credential that you could use to potentially maybe you want, you've found that you love Purdue now and you want to go there. And so you add that to your resume, or even if you decide you want to do something else, it's still, you know, impressive to say, I got a certificate of participation in this particular program from Purdue University. So click the link below in the description box to check out the program at Purdue. It sounds really exciting. The other thing that I don't think that I mentioned as well is that for the first program I mentioned in DePaul, that one's only three and a half weeks. So you could technically do both the DePaul program and the Purdue program if you're doing the four week one, you'd have to look at the dates to figure out the overlapping. But I think that'd be pretty cool because they are literally right next door to each other, guys. And like I said, there's a lot of shared studying between these different universities in Chicago and in Indiana. So you could just start out with the DePaul program and then slide right next door into Indiana. And then you're basically getting two universities for one in a lot of ways and so much experience over the course of the summer. So definitely check that out. Figure out a way to potentially do both. And if you do do both, come back and let me know in the comments. I want to know if anyone goes out there and does that. I would definitely do that. I'm that type of person where it's like, yeah, the craziest thing you put out there. I'm like, yep, sign me up for it. So definitely consider if you can do that, but it's going to be a great option for you if you are able to even just do the Purdue program. So find out more about that in the description box. So for the third program, we are heading to the left coast. Um, some people say the wrong coast. I'm just going to leave that alone. But we are heading to UCLA. So Los Angeles, UCLA is a part of the University of California system. It is one of the largest, if not the largest, public university systems in the country. And so with UCLA in particular, there's I think eight or nine UCs. I mean, everyone knows UC Berkeley, UC Davis, UC Merced. I can't even remember them all. But UCLA is one of the most well-known ones. Again, it is in Los Angeles. So you can't get more well-known than that. It's like the second largest market within the country um, for things like media and for news and for finance and all that great stuff and obviously music and all the things. But with UCLA, compared to a lot of the other UCs, they have a huge international population. I think that they even outweigh UC Berkeley now in terms of their international population. And one of the things that happens with this particular opportunity for the summer is that they have summer courses. And so with their summer courses, they just have general summer courses for everyone. So anyone can sign up. You don't have to be a currently enrolled UCLA student to do that. So they have their summer sessions. But one of the great things about it is that they do a lot of intake of international students during the summer sessions. And so what you'll find is that there are a variety of courses offered within this. So it could be anything from art history to finance to communications, journalism, medicine. They're so much that is offered. And so this is going to be a little bit of a turn compared to the other two programs where you're not necessarily coming to learn English flat out, 
but it is a great way to sort of immerse yourself. So I would recommend this for even students who are beginners who are like, I just want to learn more, number one, about how the university system in the United States works, but I want to be able to immerse myself within a actual classroom setting where I'm going to be in here trying to learn how to study, how to do these different things within the U.S. culture. And UCLA is just known for that during the summer, particularly in the way that their summer sessions work. Now, one of the things to point out about this particular program is that I'm going to drop the bomb now. There is no financial aid. So you just want to keep that in mind that there's not as much assistance as you would find in the other two programs, but it's still very affordable. So again, I'm going to bring it back out and say that you you would be paying between $3,500 and $8,500 um, to study for the summer. Now, that may sound very expensive, but to Americans, like I say, anytime you're putting in the context of what we would think about in terms of expensive for college, we're like, sign us up, we're there for the summer. So it is a little bit more expensive and pricier than the other two programs that I mentioned. But I think that you just have to think about the fact that it is going to be much more of a premium brand. So with UCLA summer sessions in particular, that's something that they're known for. They market it very heavily. So it is more of their premium brand. So you are paying for that. You are paying to actually, you know, walk the halls of UCLA, which it is a wonderful place. It's actually one of my favorite campuses. I lived on campus twice. Um, I did not go there, but I lived on campus twice for different internships. And I love that place. And can I just give a shout out to Ackerman? The Ackerman Union, you can spend a lot of time in there. It's one of my favorite places on campus, but I just love the way that that campus is situated and it just makes me really excited. So if you go there, I wanna come visit you and I will probably show up and be there. Um, it's a great place to be. But with the particular program, one of the things to know, it's very similar to the other programs is that you do have access to housing as well. So UCLA in particular, has a lot of summer housing. As I just talked about, I lived there for two different summers and it, I didn't really see a lot of UCLA students. They were there, but a lot of them are older and they live off campus by the time that their time comes around for the summertime. And so you see like just so many different students. So it's a great way to be able to not just mingle with people in your class, but you could potentially be living in housing where you're going to meet students from all around the world. A lot of them will be there for the same reason as you are trying to learn the language, trying to get themselves immersed in everything. So it's a really great way, again, to start building those connections. I think that a lot of students, when they're thinking about study abroad, they don't think of sort of the aspect of building the connections. But particularly if you, let's say, want to come back to a country to, let's say, study for a longer period of time, this is going to be a time to do it, even if UCLA or Purdue or DePaul is not going to be your choice. We have so many colleges and universities in this country that you can choose from. And again, these are just three programs that I'm talking about right now. But you'll want to just consider the fact that this is going to be a great foundation to be able to do this. This is something that I did when I knew that I wanted to go back to the UK. I had already built that foundation there. And so it's a really great way to do it. And in the summertime, it's going to be perfect because not only are you getting the summer experience of you're in America in the summer, which it can be quite fun, depending on where you are, but you're also too, you're able to sort of build in a lot more connections because again, like even the professors and the people that are there, they have a lot more bandwidth compared to if you were studying for a longer period of time. And so try and make those inroads, try and make those connections, try and make a good impression and a name for yourself that even if you don't go back to that place, you've made a connection, you've been able to sort of build um, those particular inroads. And so I really just want to impress that upon you. Now, earlier in this video, I talked about visas. And so I know that student visas are something that really stress a lot of students out. I don't want you to worry. I want you to breathe. It's going to be okay. What I want you to do is go watch this video so that you can learn more about the basics of student visas. I'll see you over there.